Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alan. Welcome back to the Alan Hines YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out Virtual Digital Championship Round 4 at Brazil Landrina. Uh, this event was absolutely a lot of fun. We had a fantastic result. We ended up finishing first place overall, but it was quite an adventure to get to that point. Uh, Brazil Ladrina obviously is a new circuit for the VDC uh, for 2021 anyway and so because of that it meant that it was completely new and open playing field. The, uh, the track was super quick, it was super super fast, so you're looking at 180 km entry, maybe like 110 miles per hour. Uh, handbrake entry here was discouraged, they didn't want us using the handbrake here, there was not a decel point, so we had to get quite creative with the high speed entry using a clutch kick and vein to be able to get the car into angle. After the initiation point, you need to keep the car pinned all the way into the first inner clipping point or clipping point two. Uh, you could use this clipping point as a transition um, point to get into the outer zone of the wall and then run that wall all the way to the end. And then you had a very quick transition to cross the finish line. Now the clipping points on this track weren't exactly lined up and the judges were a bit lenient on how we approached those clipping points. So for example, clip point three, which is on the long wall, we were able to leave that clip point a little bit early to be able to set ourselves up nicely for the rest of the, the layout. Now, because of that, I do think that the first half of the track was the most important part of the circuit, and therefore that's where uh, the battle was kind of decided, really, if that makes sense. You know, if you weren't really there, or if you weren't really attacking, um, you know, finishing off door to door at the very end of the track, it was easy, right? It, it was the start that was the most important, and I think that was quite evident throughout the battles. But before we get into the battles, let's have a quick look at our qualifying runs. Uh, these two runs, I'm going to run them back to back. I don't think there's much point in, um, yeah, running them individually, I suppose, because we ended up getting in 94.7 for both runs. So the, the two runs, they were very similar. We both got 94.7 on both runs. The thick initiations are quite similar. The angle throughout the first corner was quite similar. The inner apex of the uh, clip point two was quite similar. It was just the approach to clip point three wall, like you see right here, was the biggest difference. You know, one run, the first run, we had way more angle, but a little bit off the wall. The second run, we had more, uh, sorry, less angle, but we were way closer to the wall. And those were, I think, the two biggest differences between the two runs um, but ultimately they kind of worked out to be getting us the same score and overall that gave us a uh, second place in qualifying behind uh, Alexander Holstner who got a 96.3 I believe and uh, I think it was a Tikan Pileski who qualified third with a 94.3 uh, so uh, very close in qualifying in the end. So for our first battle we had uh, Kazoo go to in his uh, really really cool uh, S S13 or RPS13 is like proper Japanese, like 15 inch style wheels, very very cool. Uh, based out of Japan, so his ping is quite high. Um, but the Japanese drivers, you can never, uh, you know, uh, second guess them. You know, they might have that ping disadvantage, but they are very very talented drivers. Of course, that's where drift drifting originated from. So you know, they quite have a bit more experience than us, a bit more knowledge, I suppose. So uh, it was quite important, obviously, to not sleep on these guys because you never know what to expect so you know obviously doing what we do which is very very uh, prominent what we try to do a lot is the perfect lead runs or continue to do the same lead runs and that's what we did in this position here um, you know flick in decent angle to the intercom point get it nice and early onto the wall uh, a little bit shallow off the wall there but kazoo go to there is right with us a bit of an over rotation there um, off that wall and uh, yeah and across the line nothing nothing crazy there just had to do a decent this ish chase run and not really get caught up like i said goto has the disadvantage of the uh ping so when he's chasing us you know, we're a little laggy for him and he's a little laggy for us when we're chasing him. So the, it is difficult. Um, you know, the server is based in the UK. So anyone outside of Europe really is at a disadvantage, unfortunately. And that's just the laws of, you know, that's just how it is for us uh, as gamers, I suppose, really. So yeah, we end up getting the win from that battle. We end up moving on into the top 16. And uh, this is where we're starting to get a little saucy indeed. So for the top 16, we ended up battling my very, very good friend, Augusto uh, Ferrari. <laughs> Sorry, Augusto. Uh, yeah, Augusto is a great friend of mine. Um, this is my first time actually battling Augusto. And uh, yeah, it was always great to drive with Augusto, but this is the first time we battled. Massive mistake from him on initiation. I think our speed in the initiation caught him out. Um, but he got nicely back onto the door here for the uh, outer clip point three on the wall. 
and uh, hit a pretty decent finish towards the run, really attacked across the line. But I mean, that mistake that he had in the first uh, clip point one to clip point two is obviously a massive disadvantage for him. So going into that, that's all we had to do was just make sure we were cleaner there, uh, make sure we didn't make any major mistakes, and then just be there with him across the, the rest of the circuit. So, you know, we cleaned up, we're pretty decent angle here throughout the first uh, inner clip point, uh, out towards the wall here. He's a bit, you know, he's there on the wall. We've chased him nicely. We give him a bit of room here in the transition. Again, Augusto being from Brazil, he's a higher ping, so we have to be aware of that. Uh, but certainly, we can attack a little bit more than versus Goto, who has a higher ping based off the fact he's further away from us. So, uh, yeah, we end up getting away from that battle and end up moving on into the top eight. Um, and uh, yeah, it was great to battle Augusto, like I said. Uh, first time ever battling him, but uh, yeah, it was one of those battles that uh, I'm pretty sure that he could have gone either way. So for top eight, we had Luciano um, Canerio. C Canero? Sorry, Luciano. <laughs> uh, all the way from Portugal. Uh, Luciano is a great driver. I think this is his first season of doing um, Virtus Championship. Uh, really, really talented. Took out Connor Shanahan in the top 16, so uh, we couldn't really sleep on him. We had to make sure we do the good lead run. We actually ended up leaving a gap here on the start line. Again, our S15 is quite quick in a straight line. And, um, you know, look look at our lead run here. It's quite decent. Again, up towards the wall. Exactly the same type of lead run that we're trying to do all day here. Same lead run in qualifying, same in the battles. And uh, Luciano doesn't really attack until the end of the track. You know, that big gap disadvantage yet to start kind of stayed through all the way until the last inner clip point or the last two clip points. So coming in here, all we have to do is just do a good, decent, clean chase run, not get caught up in anything, but we go full ham here. I had a bit of an understeer on initiation, but we nicely catch back up onto the door here for the outer clip point. Uh, three on the wall and stay with him all the way just try not to let him get away uh, but didn't want to attack too much because there was no need to you know the worst case scenario we'll pull it one more time and we'll just do it again and uh, other than that well we end up getting the win and moving on into the final four now for our final four battle we end up uh, battling Victor Alves uh, Victor Alves and I have gone back to back many many times mostly in EDC or electronic drift championship uh, but this time we end up meeting in VDC I think is this our first time meeting in VDC I don't think so, but I do believe we have more wins over Victor. And uh, heading into this battle again, just do the same lead run as we do all the time. But Victor was very, very good so far. You know, he's took, he took out Element, he took out uh, my teammate Reese Tatterson. We did have to do a really good run here. And he has made a few mistakes. You might have seen initiation, he had a massive mistake, dived too early on the door, tapped us on the transition here across the uh, and across the finish line. Again, kind of a messy chase. But one thing, and, uh, and this is what something I had to be careful of in my chase position, was that uh, Victor's transition after clip point one or clip point two, should I say, is quite slow and quite late. And I, I picked up on this from the battle with my teammate Reese and Element. And Reese and Element both struggled with this transition, uh, slower transition style. And you might see it right here, as you can see, very kind of hesitant on the transition from yes, uh, from from yester. That's his YouTube name from Victor. And so I really had to uh, back off, give him the time to transition, and then power through the catch back up on again on him. And it was very, very, uh, it was something that I wasn't aware of until I seen it happen with Element, who struggled to get back on the door after that transition, and also with Reese, who, who actually understeered quite badly. So, uh, again, it was nothing wrong with what Victor was doing. He was doing everything completely legal, but it was something for me that, or other than the fact that I was actually watching uh, what happened to the previous drivers, it was something I wasn't really paying attention to, and it was something at that point, make sure to give enough space, not get, you know, uh, give them too much room, and then, you know, forget to get back on the door but give enough room power back up onto the door and be there with him across across the rest of the circuit and so uh, yeah that was enough for us to get the win and move on into the finals now for the finals we end up meeting this guy again Tigan Bolesky Tigan <clears throat> my friendly nemesis I suppose you could say we've battled so many times um, I think at this point I think Tigan still has the win count over us but I think we're slowly catching back up and you know, as it is being the finals, we have to push super hard here, right? We're up against Tikan. It doesn't matter if you're in the finals or top 32. If you're against Tikan, you have to push hard. And Tikan is very, very good at applying the pressure. He's very good at attacking. As you can see, he's right on the door from us from the get-go. Uh, on the inner transition here, again, look, we're just doing the same lead run as we possibly can every single time. But Tikan's right there with us. As you can see, he's there with us all the way. Shallow's up on the transition angle there. It was a bit of an odd mistake from Tikan. I don't know if he was expecting us to be shorter in the wall or longer in the water, I'm not really sure. But when we swap the positions here, um, I don't believe I did the greatest of initiations behind. Um, 
but I knew that mistake from Tikon in that transition. So we're a bit shallow and angled here, but we do time the transition quite nicely. Uh, we'll give him a little tap on the door here, a little shallow and angle from us, but he stays on the wall a little bit too. Actually, no, he was not too bad there, but we give enough room on the transition. Again, I don't think it was the cleanest of battles from us. You know, he makes mistakes, I make mistakes, and I think uh, the judges decided to go one more time was probably the fairest call. To be honest, at that point, um, I was content of just finishing second. Uh, you know, that battle was amazing. It was my, one of my favorite battles of all time. And, you know, going one more time again, I was pumped. Obviously, I knew, you know, going against Tikon, not to make mistakes in the chase position, but let's get over the lead run. Let's do the lead run that we always do and just go from there. And from this point, one thing I do notice is that uh, Tikon is well able to get on the door straight, straight away. And that's because I do a lot of left foot braking at the initiation. Uh, but going through the inner transition here, uh, again, on the wall again, just doing the same thing that we've been doing all day is important. We left the zone uh, early there. That's allowed, like I said earlier, and across the line. Tikon actually hits us across the finish line, which is why we gained so much angle there. It's this little tap which pushed the car into a little bit more angle. So we swap positions. Let's leave the start line here. Again, I'm going to talk about the initiation point here. Um, like I said, I do the left foot brake after the initiation, which slows me down a lot. Tikon doesn't left foot brake at all. Maybe just a little tap. And so it's harder for me to catch up. Again, not his fault. Um, but I want to rewind back here just a tad for a second here. Let's go back a second because this is kind of interesting. Um, as we go through the inner clip points here, look at the amount of angle Tikon is carrying at this point. It's, it's a crazy amount of angle. And it's, you could almost argue it's unchaseable. Now, for me, I saw this coming. Uh, I saw this angle angling up and I knew I had to back the right off because if I attack at that point, it, it makes it so that um, I'm more likely to crash into him. Now, I do believe it was a mistake from Tikon. Tikon admitted that he kind of understeered or something at that point, so he had to do a massive correction to gain the angle back up, and he ended up gaining a bit too much angle. But he corrects for it quite well. Um, I back off enough to give him the room to do the transition, and then we power through the transition to dive right back on the door. And it was a really, it was a sweet transition. I think it was pure luck. Uh, it wasn't really pure luck, but we were very lucky that we didn't make contact again. And you know, it worked out beautifully for us in the end. And we had a very aggressive chase across the finish line. So uh, after that, again, it was super close battle. Again, I was content. If we finished second, I was more than happy. It was my f one of my favorite, if if not the favorite battles I've had of all time. And uh, you know what, if we finished second, I would have been happy with it, but in the end, we didn't end up getting the win. I think it was very close, it probably should have gone one more time maybe, but uh, at that point, I think if it went one more time, I think I would have gone full kamikaze and probably would have destroyed Tikan and pushed him right over the wall and sent him off flying from Brazil off into, I don't know, Europe somewhere, you know, so <laughs> great battle with Tikans as always. We've had uh, three wins over him this year in VDC, I'm sure he's going to be back with vengeance and try and take us down at the next round. Uh, next round round five in a uh, manfield so that should be very very interesting so guys that's going to be end of today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it put down in the comment section below what do you what was your favorite battle from the weekend um what was your favorite you know what do you think of brazil uh i didn't really put my two thoughts on the brazilian track layout but i do think it was very very tough very very tricky um but Manfield was supposed, is supposed to be more difficult. That's where we're going for round five for VDC. That'll be on the 20th of February. But before then, we have Drift Masters Virtual Championship. Again, round two this coming weekend. So make sure to keep an eye on the channel for the live streams and our practice video that we will be uploading later this week. But as always, thank you again for so much for watching the video. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. Cheers and goodbye.